Hello and welcome to a bite-sized guide to get you started in clearing one of your many required runs of Raffalos Extreme in Final Fantasy XIV. I was fortunate enough to make a group with patient individuals and friends alike to get this down for the footage today, but if you follow these basic guidelines you can't really go wrong. Raffalos Extreme is much like the 8-man normal variant, the significant difference is that there's 4 of you and that you share a pool of 3 lives for the entire party. If any of you collectively die 3 times, the fight instantly resets. We went with a tank, healer and 2 DPS setup for this kill, but this isn't actually required and people have done it with all tank compositions for example already, it's mostly just down to avoiding mechanics. There is no enmity on the boss itself, but the adds that show up during the fight can and should be picked up and tanked by the tank. Until those add phases, however, you need to stay in your DPS stance and hit it as much as you can to shorten the length of the fight. DPS is very important. If you are or you're bringing a healer, please advise it is very important and I would say mandatory to bring a sooner as one of your chosen roll actions. The reason for this is there is a plethora of debuffs throughout the fight where you cannot actually heal and you will need to remove these as fast as possible. This as well goes for any jobs that can actually actively remove dots from either themselves or others as well. It's a very important thing to do as it gets to the point in the last stage where every debuff removal counts. For the first phase, healing is turned on. This means your healer, if you have one, can use all of their normal abilities to heal the party as they would usually in a normal fight. This changes at a later phase however, so don't get too comfortable. The first major ability we should talk about is this where you'll get a marker placed on a random player. This player should stand away from other people because this will actually explode doing damage to everything around it. There's a key point here that this will actually do damage to adds as well, so if you have one of these up during an ad phase, be sure to actually drop it on adds, it can even kill them. Once this actually fades, you will also get a burn debuff on that target, you'll need to assume this off as well and heal them from the damage from the explosion. In the first phase we're needing to be fairly spread out on the room here, as this boss does a series of moves, a few of which are charges in various directions he faces or attacks that target a player at random. Ranged characters should be fine simply waiting to see where Raffalus is facing and then run to either side to avoid his pathing charges. Melee characters can hide behind the boss's left leg to easily avoid damage from most sources. Occasionally Raffalus will do a 180 degree tailspin. The boss here will actually look in a direction he's about to spin, so you can easily avoid this attack if you are in melee range by running to the other side of his head and then passing back through the boss. Raffalus will cast Raw throughout Phase 1 and must be healed through. This is your basic AoE healing damage, but also aligns with small phase changes in the fight, signifying their introduction. A set of adds will spawn eventually, these are random creatures disturbed by Raffalus itself. During this time your tank should try to group them up and tank them together, so you will need to AoE these down while still avoiding all of the usual Raffalus charging bites and tail swipes etc. Phase 2 of the fight begins later with the spawning of an ad called a Garula. This Garula will knock down Raffalus. This places a blue circle in front of its head on the floor. A DPS should go into this blue circle, which actually puts them on top of the boss mounted, where they must stab the boss repeatedly to keep its attention, whilst meanwhile the rest of the group kills the Garula as fast as possible on the ground. Your tank needs to be in tank stance for this ad as it spams upheaval. Anyone other than the tank is likely going to die if they stand in front of it, so bear that in mind. Once the Garula is dead, the mounted player is thrown off and Raffalus flies to the edge of the map. In this time you must run to the corpse of the Garula you killed and stand behind it to survive and line of sight the incoming ultimate. Failure to do so is a definite KO due to it hitting for many millions of HP. Phase 3 then begins and this is the last stretch after the Garula dies. This is the most dangerous part of the fight and hopefully you have as many remaining lives as possible in this phase. Healing is disabled here, however it is important your healer uses a sooner like crazy to reduce the damage players take from a stacking burn and poison dots. If your class can remove dots, please use it to help out. You have 10 mega potions to use which is the button in the middle of your screen, but you need to save these when either you're desperate or when you do the dance part of the fight which I'll talk about in just a moment. You need to be separate from each other and look upwards to see where Raffalus is. If he's facing you, be quick to move to the sides from his direct path, 
as any of these abilities he uses on players will pretty much kill a DPS or healer outright. Amongst the onslaught of attacks, Rafflers will pause for a moment in the fight to put a stack marker on a player. Bring this stack marker if it's on you into melee range so that the tank and melee DPS, if you have some, can still DPS the boss. But make sure you stack, and then collectively move in a direction as after the first stack marker fades, it drops a fire patch, which puts a stack of burn debuff on everyone who's stacked, and then another stack marker, with another stack of burn and a patch of fire, and then finally a third stack marker and another burn circle. At this point, you should use a mega potion with the action button on screen every second burn stack, ensure that you are sooner as much of the stacking damage off as possible. After all three circles go off, you'll need to spread immediately. Don't wait for anything. If needs be, use another potion if you're close to death. At this point, the boss goes back to his random dive targets, and if all of you are in melee range and don't move fast enough, you're easily going to cause a wipe. We tried to stay in separate parts of the arena from each other, but we arranged pre-pull, but common sense and spreading works just as well. Eventually, you will fill a meter on screen which will ground the boss for a small amount of time. You increase this, it seems, by hitting the boss more. When this meter fills, regardless of what the boss and players are doing at the time, he will fall to the floor. This is a vulnerability state, increasing the amount of damage Raffalus takes from attacks, sometimes requiring you to attack a tail, which should be priority if it is up. Other times, it's just his body with the vulnerability debuff. Later in the fight, when you ground him for perhaps the second or third time depending on your DPS, you should use a DPS limit break to bring him close to death or an actual kill. A few tips then. If you can organize the room into basic quarters of where members of your party will roughly stand, you'll have less issue of being collaterally hit by charges or eliminating early deaths. If it all goes tits up on the last stage, your tank can easily take three stack markers himself using cooldowns. This is especially useful if everyone's running out of potions, or if you think you would die if you were to help stack and others are in a similar situation near to the end of a messy run. It's important to keep calm and notice what course of action is the best to take at the time, which is something which is very exciting and nerve-wracking at the same time. The fight is very straightforward on paper, but it is very dependent on noticing tells and reaction times. A very well designed fight then, but takes a perfect leaf from the content it's based on from the Monster Hunter franchise. Either way, hopefully this small bite sized guide was helpful. If it was, throw me a like below and get involved in the comment section with your own tips and tactics that you have used to clear this trial. Thank you kindly for watching, and I'll indeed see you all next time.